All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we have another video about Dude Bro, Seth Bro, Weed Bro, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Bro, Seth Rogen, who now apparently is saying that if the media critics knew how much negative criticisms can, quote unquote, hurt the people that made the things that they would second guess the way that they write. Now, the funny thing is, the reason why he is saying what he is saying in this particular article that we're going to go over from Bounding into Comics, the reason that he is saying this is because, again, he is trying to shield the diversity hires that he has for his new show. That's number one. But the funny thing is, in a normal circumstance, I would probably agree with what he's saying because I tried to think from back with the Hogwarts Legacy situation and how much uh, the show media websites were just completely trashing Hogwarts Legacy, even though they had to admit that the game was fantastic. They ultimately had to show against it because of the fact that they are with the LGBTQ mafia and there's no way that they can let uh, the LGBTQ team know that they might any kind of way uh, disagree with them so again a lot of these show media websites loved hogwarts legacy but now in this situation i just think that he's using it or trying to say this to deflect criticism away from his show and also try to uh quote unquote protect the diverse hires within his show but let's go over it and see what this has to say so it says in the opinion of teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem producer seth rogan critics could stand to be in a little more kind when reviewing any kind of given piece of entertainment but why do they have to be kind, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, why do they have to be kind? First off, Seth Rogen, you're not very kind at all. All right? You're not a kind person. I've seen the way you operate on your Twitter. You're not kind at all. And that's fine. I have no problems with someone being labeled as, a, I guess, a meanie or whatever word you want to use. But ultimately, for you to say that the media needs to be kinder in how they uh, give out their reviews or give out their criticism, I don't necessarily think that's true. But unfortunately, they are going to try to say, oh, well, you're just being a big old meanie. And they're trying to downplay what you actually have to say about the TV show or the movie or whatever you may be reviewing. It says a Canadian-born Hollywood star offered his thoughts on the current state of media reviews during a recent appearance on the 227th episode of British entrepreneur Stephen Barlett's interview-based podcast, The Diary of a CEO. Asked by the most recent investor to join the cast of the reality show's Dragon's Den, the original UK version of what Americans know as Shark Tank, if he ever suffered from self-doubt uh, regarding his work, Rogan asserted, in general, from my experience, I would say that applies to creative people's self-doubt. For me, it comes in waves, you know. He recalled to his host, you make a thing everyone likes, it gets a little better. You make a thing everyone hates, it gets a little worse. Well, that's the thing. You know all about making things that everybody hates because you're going to do you did it before with Santa Inc and you damn sure are going to do it now with the current show that you're making with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, you're on a roll, Seth Rogen. I would probably calm down. I don't know why you made this, man. I don't know why you made this. You should have just laid low after Santa Inc., especially after Velma took the top spot for the worst show ever, and now you're trying to come back for that. I think that's what it is. I really do. I think he, I think Seth Rogen is trying to come back and take the title away from Velma. I think Seth Rogen and Mindy Kaling are going to be going back and forth to see who can have a more worst show, like who can have the top worst show ever, and that's what they're trying to do. It says, and that's a part of doing what I do. The Invincible Voice actor continued, It's funny. I was saying to someone I work with the other day, I'm at the point in my career where not a lot of people are in a position to yell at me in my job, but the New York Times will publish an entire article saying I suck at my job. Well, that's because you do. You do suck at your job. Like I, I don't understand why you don't understand that, but you do suck at your job. You made this entire job about identity politics. That's what you have gone into. Your job is of politics. It's not of entertaining people, and that's the problem. That's why you suck at the job. If you had a job in politics, maybe you wouldn't suck so much. Obviously, I still think you would, but at least you can say, okay, he's a politician. They're all kind of the same, but unfortunately for you, you're in the job of entertainment, and you're choosing to do politics within that field, thus automatically making you suck. There's not even a chance at you being able to redeem yourself because that puts you in the auto-suck zone. Like, there's no way to get out of the auto-suck zone. You're in there with Adam Sessler. You're in there with Frost. You're in there with a lot of good company because you're deciding to do politics within the entertainment field, and that's your own choice. That's your fault. It says, and so like that's the trade-off, Rogan noted. I also worked my way up to not having to deal with that much personal conflict and face-to-face -face conflict, but I will have a cultural institution tell everyone that I suck. That would add self-doubt, things like that. For me, it's something that's present, but I try not to let it stop me from doing the things that I think are interesting and the things that I would enjoy watching. Press for, well, okay, so like, before I even continue, things that I would enjoy watching. 
That's the problem. You as a creative, you are trying to make a TV show or a movie for yourself. You're not making it for the fans of the IP of which you are adapting. You are adapting a major IP such as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you're deciding to make the show that you want to watch yourself. You're not looking at the fans. You're not looking at the current base that's there. You're focused on what would make you happy, Seth Rogen, and that's why you suck at your job your job is to entertain other people it's not to entertain yourself and that you just exposed yourself right there it says press further by barlett as to whether or not such criticisms have ever hurt him specifically rogan exclaimed oh yeah it hurts everyone yes he reiterated in terms of himself very much so i think if most critics knew how much it hurt the people that made the things that they are writing about they would second guess the way they write these things it's devastating, he added. I know people who never recover from it, honestly. Years, decades of being hurt, it's very personal. It is devastating when you are being institutionally told that your personal expression was bad. That is like devastating. It's something that people carry with them, literally, their entire lives, said Rogan, and I get why. It effing sucks. Well, again, you're just you're just a psychopath, too. Like, I don't really know how else to put it. You've had so many bad takes and listen people are allowed to have bad takes we're only human at the end of the day but when it comes to entertainment you are horrible at it dude you were so much better originally when you focused on actually entertaining other people but the problem is as a creative you are too focused on entertaining yourself and you just admitted that in this article it says in light of their broaching the topic of bad reviews barlett then turned to inquire with rogan as to how he specifically dealt with the fallout when his projects flopped to this end he specifically asked for the actor's thoughts regarding the reaction to 2011's wildly panned Green Hornet film, which both starred and was written by Rogan. The reviews were coming out, and it was pretty bad, and people just kind of like hated it, he recalled. It seems like a thing that people were taking joy in just disliking a lot. You know what I mean? Elaborated Rogan. But it opened to like $35 million, which was, I think at the time, was the biggest opening weekend I have ever been associated with in any capacity. So it did pretty well. Well, is the opening weekend the only thing that is, is going to show whether a movie is doing well or not? I don't think that's pretty fair because we've seen movies have great opening weekends that end up falling off so unbelievably hard that they don't make their money back. They don't even break even. So Ant-Man Quantumania is probably the latest example of that. They had a great opening weekend and just mega flopped afterwards. So I don't really know why you would say it's doing pretty well just because you had a good opening weekend. But again, this is Seth Rogen we're talking about. His, his uh, threshold for doing well is very low. He then noted that that's what that's what's nice sometimes. You can grasp for some sense of success at times. I honestly think things like the interview were more painful as far as people taking joy in talking shit about it and really kind of questioning the types of people who would want to make a movie like that in general. The actor opined that felt far more personal. I think Green Hornet felt like I had just fallen victim to, which is untrue, a big fancy thing. The superhero film, he admitted, we were also ahead of the curve a little bit too much to some degree. We were early on the wave and so I think that was easier to deal with in a lot of ways because it was not so much a creative failure on our parts but more like a conceptual failure failure so listen at the end of the day man seth rogan is making up every excuse that he needs to make up in order to make himself feel better about the movies that he's making ultimately as a creative he said it earlier in the article he is making content that he himself would like to watch that is the biggest problem when you're trying to make content for so many different kinds of people if you make content strictly for yourself especially when you're adapting a known ip it's not about you anymore. If you're making your own IP, if you're creating something that's never before been seen, that's different, dude. Make whatever the hell you want and let the fans decide if they even like it or not. But you're adapting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. You're adapting an IP that's been around for fucking decades, all right? It's been around since you yourself were probably a kid. And now you're trying to tell other people that they need to just get on with it. They need to be able to uh, be a little lighter on their reviews and not say such mean things or, or not hate on it so hard. Dude, you're making a fucking movie for yourself on an established IP that millions of other people like. It just doesn't make sense to me, and that is why you are going to continue to fail as a creative. And this movie, I guarantee, is going to be another example of Santa Inc., in this uh seth rogan saga that we have so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you did enjoy it if you did consider leaving me a subscribe i would greatly appreciate it. don't forget to like the video comment let me know what you thought and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out